please welcome Jacques Vlad. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to please have your consideration and your uh, passion because my English is not so fluent and I need your understanding of getting that. Maybe sometime I will block. I have, I have time, I need time to explain. Um, it's funny because of all what I saw this afternoon and uh, I think it starts yesterday. It's 25 years ago, but honestly, the time is going so fast, so it was difficult for me to organize a presentation in a regular way uh, in the timing, because when I saw what we've done at the beginning, what Olivier uh, showed to us at the beginning of the different company, for me it was yesterday. Uh, just uh, because I think this is a very, very exciting job, and we don't see the time go in. Uh, a few words about the story of, of MacGuff. Uh, MacGuff is starting in 86. It's, um, this is a story of five students. We were at the same school in Paris, in a regular uh, cinema school without computer, because at this time the job really doesn't exist. But uh, we made a strange uh, encounters. Uh, one of the the guy talked to people and uh, discovered, in fact, the Olivier uh, software, Imagix. And I think we discovered this software in 85, something like that. I don't remember exactly. And we decided at this time to create a company, a computer graphic company, which was without any models, without economic, any economic model, just the idea that it could work, maybe. And the first things we did was to test and to make films for promoted Jix Image and Imagix. And we were working, and remember, every weekend we go to the Porte de Bagnolet in the big towers, and we pick up the material, and we bring back the material to our apartment, and we work on the Saturday and the Sunday, and the Sunday evening, we bring back the material to Jix Image in order to uh, have the machine for us and machine for them, logically, during the weeks. That was the very beginning, and of course, in that kind of story, the most important thing is, could be the change. And I think we have the change. We really have change. Because in six months after the beginning of the company, we met in a famous nightclub called Les Bains Douches. It was very famous at this time. And we met very three very key personality, key people who are really helped us. Those guys were Philip Stark. Philip Stark was a, is and was a big designer. It was not the beginning of his story, but he was not well known as now. The second one was Jean-Baptiste Mondino. And Jean-Baptiste Mondino, at this time, has produced one, I think, one video music called La Danse Demo, The Dance World. And the third was a, the owner of the Bandouche and also a producer called Fabrice Coat. And he made a company which still exists. It was in, called Programme 33. And I think without these three people, MacGuff won't, never will be what MacGuff is right now. The first thing I'm going to show to you is, the music, is one of the music videos we made at the very, very beginning for the Rita Mitsuko. And the Rita Mitsuko was also, everybody begin at this time, uh, they have one famous success before, uh, called Marsa Bahia, and after that they produce a wonderful uh, album with many wonderful things and songs. Sorry, and uh, Jean Baptiste Mondino decided to make a vi music video, and the first one is um, I like uh, "C'est comme ça" in French. We can translate it. It's like that, and it was a very very exciting project, and I'm gonna show you the first a little part of this 
project I have stone on What we have done on this project was very, very basic and uh, extremely simple. Because in fact, what we provide to, to Jean-Baptiste was the, the kind of curtain, the CG curtain we had behind the, the, the singer. But it was a long, long, long time to produce and very difficult, I remember, to transfer to the company who made the compositing. Because at this time, we have no equipment uh, to have the the ability to transfer um, to a videotape uh, because Olivier was saying about the fact that some uh, device still existing but we have not mon no money for that. So what we've done, I remember it was just before Christmas, we pick up the screen, we go to the studio and we shoot the screen with the camera. And after that we take the tape and we make the compositing in another company called UMT. Uh, it was very interesting because at this time, as soon as something like that exists, you have many, many press reviews. And this was a big success. And this big success is a very, very good thing because this is a way how people from agency, people from TVs, know MacGuff. So I will show you some examples, two of them Olivier has still a little bit show in the demo reel, but just takes time to explain what was the first commercial from McGuff and what was the first TV opening, TV opening title from McGuff. So the first commercial is a, is a commercial for Pierre Import. Pierre Import is a furniture purchaser, and the idea was to work on the drawing of uh, Hugo Pratt, the Corto Maltese creator. And it was not so obvious because we people want to have a CG movie in 3D. They don't want to have 2D animation. They want to create a new a universe based on the reference of uh, Corto Maltese and Hugo Pratt, but they don't want something in 2D. So the, we take many times to recreate CG model based on what is into the uh, Hugo Pratt uh, drawings. So that means that we have to modelize that, and after that the animation was not so obvious to do, so it's only a compositing of different layers. So um, let's have a look to Pierre Rampo. Il y a des meubles qui vaut mieux ne pas aller chercher soi-même. It was um, 
a kind of success too, because this is something uh, really different from what are currently on air on 3D animation or 3D commercial, because we were close to the original drawing. And in fact, what we really liked since the beginning at McGuff with my uh, shareholder is to have a big connection in between the live action or graphic universe very well defined. And um, the second thing I can show you during this first period of McGuff was Panic sur le 16. Panic sur le 16 was the TV opening, the opening title, sorry, from, from a TV show, an afternoon TV show uh, on the French television called La Une at this time and now TF1. And this is something we uh, create from the beginning. We create the concept. And if you look at the guy, it, it looks like the singer of Lirita Mitsuko. And now Fred is not anymore in this world anymore, but this is a, something we want to uh, consider because we really like, really like this guy. So we just invent a kind of story, a story of a guy with climbing on a building in order to, 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 to put the, the TV uh, antenna in, in a right way. And I remember it was a long time, long, long time, long, long discussion with uh, everybody at uh, La Une because they don't know McGuff. And they was, I think this was one of the first uh, CG animation uh, opening title they have. So I have a lot of a look to that and I will explain many things about it. One of the main concerns we had during this time is that we are not broadcast. In fact, we are not at the level of what the TV uh, station and the TV channel want to have. So uh, even if the Olivier software was very good, <laughs> but it was difficult to be at this time. And until the end and until the delivery, we were very anxious that the fans said no, you are not a good level of uh, the blue is not the good blue, the red is not the good red, because at this time they have analogic system to analyze the, the, the image. And in fact, of course, all the technicians at the fan said, ah, it's not good. But Christophe de Chavannes, the, the, the guy from the show, said, ah, I really like it, we keep it. So they keep the, 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 the opening title for one season, and after the show disappears, so. <laughs> uh, this is. I think the first part of my guff, and um, until the end of the 80. At the beginning of the 90, we decided to uh, start developing home software. Um, before, in between this period, after working with Imagix, we worked with Explore from Thomson Digital Image, which was a very, very big difference, of course, uh, nothing compared. This is not a question to make a fight in between Jean-Charles and, and Olivier. Uh, this is not the key point, but when we have, I remember at the first time, two stations uh, with Explore, the life is changing. And we did a lot of things. Maybe I can show you something we did with Cécile Babiol called L'Exon. This is something we did in during the first war in Iraq, because the business was so low, so we have nothing to do. And we discussed with a, a, a director called Cecil Babiol, very interesting people, and we imagined to meet a, to meet a pilot for what could be uh, a series. And the series never happened 
because the war is over and the business will start. No, this is not the, the reason. If the, I think we were wrong, we were right too early and animation like that at this time was simply impossible to sell to any uh, TV station. You can imagine why it's not a children program. But it was very interesting. So it was the beginning of the 90s. And uh, as I mentioned before, we start working on our own software, uh, most orientated on 2D. On 2D because this is a time when the visual effects could be uh, done in small company. Before, it was only possible in big American company uh, with a lot of powerful, which was not the MacGuff case. Because I, rem I let you know, at this time, we were always five or six. Or in 81, in 91, we hired our first, first people in research and development. And this is the beginning of the, something is very important for MacGuff is the development of a 2D software we call Trucor. And Trucor has been made for make morphing, because at this time the morphing was very famous. So I can show some example. One are regular morphing in the time, and one other in a spe special morphing. I don't know if this word is really exists, but it's what we call in, in the space. So this is two um, pieces of uh, two video music, French, French music video, sorry. Uh, directed the first one by Jean-Baptiste Modino, and the other directed by Lewis Furet. The first one is... Il y a dans ma maison quelqu'un dont je me méfie qui me défie qui s'assied à ma place qui me ressemble comme un frère qui respire mon air l'ennemi dans la glace dont le regard me glace sourit mais je le Based on the same principle, is a transformation in, in, in between Alain Chanfort, the singer, and the girl is his wife. It was strange because they look very close, and it was not so easy to do it, but it was better than to transform two people really different. The second one is a video clip with a spatial morphing. No. Now, MacGuff is a, in the visual effects uh, universe. The main business and the main market are visual effects for commercial, for uh, TV title, for TV. And after that, uh, at the middle of the 80s, uh, of course, we're going to work for, the feature, for long feature film. And the second part of our, our current acti activity is based on that point. And I will show the thing we did at the very beginning for Jan Kunen. I know that um, one of my shareholders uh, and friends presented something uh, two days ago, so I will show it very quickly. I don't know, Pierre, how many time we have? We have a couple of minutes more. Okay, thank you. So I will, I will show you what we have done for... The first one is a kind of making of for Doberman, Doberman was the first long feature film directed by Ian Kunen.
So you have a different, very simple effect, combine different layer of uh, fire because we can put Melika Bellucci in between the fire. It's too expensive. So we have different plates, and after that we compose in our own software. And this is, this is the result. This is, it was a, a very interesting visual effect because the idea of Rian was people coming out from a nightclub into the water. So this, the distance in between the nightclub and the real water is too long, so we have to recreate all the travel in between. So we map the texture of the shooting live action onto uh, the CG model, and after that we brought into the water in kind of uh, enhancement. So I have many examples of uh, what we have done on that project, the different layer. We re reconstruct, we rebuilt, sorry, in CG, the whole environment. And since this time now, all the MacGuff tools are home software, uh, because uh, the, the, the CG team from MacGuff now is uh, 12 person, uh, and of course the size of the company has really, really changed. So, and we go on like that. I want to show, uh, before stopping, because I really like them, two commercials directed by Jean-Baptiste Mondino. And for me, this is something which kind of symbol of what has been done in the middle of the 90s. And I think nothing compared has been made since that time. But this is my point of view. This is a commercial for Jean-Paul Gauthier. I never I think that there's a quality wonderful. And the next one is uh, for Kenzo. Everything has been done e except the girl in, in full CG. Huh? This is a big map. One, the one, and the elephant, every, the plane, of course, except the girl. Everything is in full CG. And I think this is absolutely something magical. Um, for finishing, I want to say one thing. I don't know, maybe uh, George, I think so, talk about that, because maybe, but I wasn't there. I want to say that nothing has been done and all what we done has been made because uh, we had a well and a strong support for the French government and the French administration. And I want to thank especially the Centre National de la Cinématographie, the CNC, because since the beginning, this administration is on our side and still there. And this is very important, and I think that if we are today, aujourd'hui, today here, sorry, it's because uh, those people help us, everybody, every company, uh, because they help for the production, they help for the research and development, and I think the, I, we have to thank the, all these people because this is very important. If I have two minutes, yes, no? One, yes, one. One, yes. Uh, it's two thirty minutes. Okay. okay. Now, just for finishing, because now MacGuff is involved uh, in animation. We made two long feature films, full CG. Uh, one is uh, called Azure and Asmar. It was present to Cannes Film Festival three years ago. And the second one is Dragon Hunter. We finished uh, last year. We are currently working on a huge project for Universal Studio. Uh, it's a 3D movie. We make the whole movie in, in Paris. This is a big, big, big budget, more than $100 million. So after, that means that since the beginning, we cannot imagine to work on that kind of project. And I remember uh, when we were 
in 86 at Imagina with Pierre Buffin, and he said, we have to survive until we work for the American Hollywood uh, market. And Buff and McGuff are now succeed in this way, and we are very proud about that. So I want to show something very short, and, and I hope you will find funny. This is something we did for the uh, BBC long time ago, but it's something I really like to show because it's funny. <laughs> Uncle Ian, look what I found at the far end of the enclosure. Oh, that's a funny looking one. What should we do with it? <laughs> Give it here. saying is, is it possible? All sorts of things are possible, Gary. I personally have never heard of a bear laying an egg, but who knows? Just hypothetically, though, do you think it could happen? Well, strange things to occur. Once in the Arctic, I thought I saw a puffin with two heads. Really? Yes. Although that actually turned out to be just two puffins standing very close together. Oh. Gary! Dinner! Be over in a while. How long a while? I don't know. A couple of months, maybe. Gary, what's going on? Oh, well, I suppose you all had to find out eventually. Claudia, prepare yourself for a shock. You want omelettes for dinner? <laughs> no, this is my egg. That's fine. Everyone else is having fish. No, no, it's my egg. There's going to be another polar bear in the family. <laughs> Gary, stop! I know we messed up with Shane. Hey! But this is a great opportunity for us to start over again. Gary, you're a mammal. Mammals don't lay eggs. Especially not male mammals. Oh, no, you see, it's very rare, but it does happen. Tell her, Ian. Tell him, Ian. I'm sorry, Gary, but it doesn't. <laughs> but it did. Look. Shane found the egg in the enclosure. You two should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm sorry, Claude. But it was a slow afternoon. So it's not... I'm sorry, Gary. That was very cruel of them. <gasps> it's a little polar bear. A little green polar bear. It's a miracle. No, Gary. It's an alligator. <laughs> Sorry, love, but you know, the hardest part of being a parent is knowing when to let go. That's it. Thank you very much.